She's a homemaker, don't you know? She'll teach you how to cook and sew, and how to wield a hammer. It's the June the Homemaker Show. Hello, and welcome to the June the Homemaker Show. I am your host, June the Homemaker, and today on June the Homemaker, we have an extremely special guest. Everyone, this is Mom Homemaker. Hi. A couple of weeks ago, maybe a week ago, Shelby left me a comment on Facebook asking if we might not do an episode about ironing because she has a really hard time ironing shirts, especially if they have darts in them. Here's the thing, I don't know how to iron at all, but when I mentioned this to my mom, mom said, oh, I've been doing ironing my whole life, only apparently we've never had a mother-daughter moment about it, so we're about to have a mother-daughter moment on camera. Is this it? I'm pretty sure this is it. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna do some ironing. I already set up the ironing board here and it's important when you have your ironing board that you have a nice cover on it to protect the clothes and it has a pad on it to protect the clothes and this is my trusty iron. This one actually has a button that's on off. A lot of old irons you just plug them in and they turn on automatically mm. which is not a good safety feature. This one also has a safety feature that if you turned it on and left the room in an hour it automatically turns itself off again. That is my kind of iron. Most irons have a steam function and in order for an iron to steam you have to add water. You add water in the top of the iron and I just happen to have a cup of water here. You just put it in the top and you watch this empty space here because that shows the water filling up. Also know when it's full if it overflows and puts water spots on your ironing board. When you're filling them you want the iron to be off and then you just very very slowly pour the water in. If it gets up to the top you stop for a second. What happens if you put the water in when it's hot? I don't know. I have always obeyed the warnings not to do that. I haven't. It sputters all over the place and tries to kill you. Oh, that's why you're not supposed to do that. You see this line here? <laughs> yes. It's all the way up. Okay, so I'm that's stop. when you stop. That is plenty of steam. Now you see I probably used about half a cup. But we want to turn it on. There is always a setting here for how hot you want it. Now you see but this first half of it? Yeah. You can't get steam if it's just that low. That's okay. what you would use for delicate fabrics. Okay. If you're not sure how hot you want the iron, maybe it's made of something other than cotton and you're afraid you're going to burn it, test it on a part of the fabric that can't be seen. There's a little sign on the front of the iron that has like the little number settings and mm -hmm. what they're good for. Mm -hmm. Is that bogus or is that for real? That is for real. See the ones in pink, acetate, nylon, yeah. polyester, yeah. any man-made fabrics you want to do on a low setting because they're just not as good as natural fabrics. And then if you're doing cotton blends, wools, cottons, linen, you can do it at the higher settings. Okay. But it's not until we get up into these higher settings that the steam will work. Okay. We've got a couple of cotton things, heavy cotton, cotton things, so we're going to put it up to about five out of seven. Well, why don't we start with a women's shirt since that's what Shelby asked for. I have a very wrinkled women's shirt here and it is cotton. And it's pink. And it's pink so it's obviously a woman's shirt. That's not true. You <laughs> My mom has traditional sensibilities. <laughs> Don't be offended everyone. When you're ironing a shirt, men's or women's, you want to start with the collar and cuffs you want to end with the collar and cuff. So to do the collar, you want to unfold it and lay it down flat. Now, there are some products you can buy to spray, like spray starch or anything like that, but we don't want our shirt to be that stiff, so we're not going to use them. This has a couple of neat features. It can do a burst of steam uh -huh. or can spray some water. In the olden, olden days, you used to take a bottle of Coke and put the screwy thing back on and there were holes in it. You would punch holes in it and it would be full of water and before you ironed a shirt or a sheet or anything you'd sprinkle water on it like that because they didn't have steam irons. They wow. just had flat irons. What a fascinating a... modern age we live in. <laughs> what movie is that from? What movie is it from? I'm not telling. I don't even know. I'm not telling. 
You have to post it in the comments. When you turn it this way and you hear that and you see the steam, you know it's hot enough, it's ready to go. We could just iron with the steam coming out, but more effective is to spray it with a little water first. Well, when I do the collars of shirts, I feel like I always end up ironing wrinkles into them. Well, the object is to get big wrinkles out and the little wrinkles you don't really care too much about. Okay. Now, the general ironing technique. You never want to leave the iron in one place for very long because it will burn through the fabric. Okay. You want to move it in a nice side to side direction. You just want to set your iron down and it helps to pull the fabric with your other hand so everything is nice and flat as you go across. You'll see that the, the collar itself is all smooth. The next thing you want to do is fold it under and iron along the folds. And you don't just wanna... along the folds, not along the rest of the collar. Yeah, and and not a real deep, heavy crease. Just just lightly touch it like that. All right. So now the collar is beautiful. So that technique, that like irony side to side sort of short type technique, is that the overall ironing technique? That is. And on larger pieces of the fabric, you can do a bigger motion. Okay, cuffs, you don't have to unfold them and then fold them again. You can just iron them the way they are. We iron that side, we iron this side, and then, just to be really cool, we kind of iron around this circle. Now there are little tiny ironing boards that you can put on top of your ironing board that are made to do cuffs and round things like sleeves and stuff. Wow, for but, the really obsessive among us, I guess. Mm, wish I had one. That way you can kind of iron out this if you don't want it to be there. We'll do the other cuff next. Get right. out nice and flat. Like that. I generally try to use the pointy end like this. Oh, I see. I remember when I made a Halloween costume when I was like 12 or whatever. Remember that green one that I wore for like 80 bajillion years? Yes. Yes. And it was like the little Renaissance maiden outfit or something. Yeah. And I had to iron the fabric, only I got really impatient about ironing it. And so instead of like ironing it in a patient way with steam, it was like some kind of acrylic. And it was. I doused it in water and ironed it on a really high thing. <laughs> and there were burns on it when I wore it for Halloween. Of course there were. <laughs> My mother, ladies and gentlemen, and I burned it. Of course you did. Thanks, Mom. That's great. Of course you screwed up again. Because you're the one who screws up household things. I did not do that. Chew the homemaker, everyone. Chew the homemaker and family.